Hey y'all, it's Riley and I'm back with another episode of The Comic Commuter, the show where I talk about comics while I'm on my way to or from work. So I'm driving home from work right now. Uh, first of all, elephant in the room, yeah, I shaved off most of my beard. Uh, it's getting hot outside. Uh, I know I'm wearing a, a jacket, it's a rain jacket right now, but it's getting hot outside so I wanted to cool down my face. Also it was getting kind of thick and I needed to trim it, but my trimmers broke so I just figured screw it, I'm just going to take it all the way down to stubble and uh, whatever, it worked. Uh, I'm, I'm good. Uh, I enjoy doing doing a, a beard reset every once in a while. But anyway, uh, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, a little more about DC right now. I've been doing some talking about DC Comics and their different imprints and stuff for a few videos. I did one for uh, the Hanna-Barbera stuff coming out, did one for the upcoming Young Animal imprint, and I did one talking about recent happenings over at Vertigo, and now this fourth and final part of this series is gonna talk about DC Rebirth, which is the big uh, relaunch that they're gonna be doing for the next few months, uh, or they're starting in the next few months for uh, all their, their main continuity titles. So, DC Rebirth, basically, just in a nutshell, it's their new relaunch. Uh, they've been doing the New 52 for about five years now, uh, six years almost, I think, and uh, and now they're moving forward from that. Unlike the New 52, where they introduced kind of a new continuity, uh, this one is going to be continuing directly from that continuity, but bringing some new things in. Uh, We'll see exactly what's going on when the Rebirth one-shot comes out, but it's, it's going to be uh, spinning out of that previous continuity from the New 52. Um, so what's going to happen, you know, for instance, Batman ran for 52 issues by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo, and after number 52, that series ended, they're going to be doing a one-shot uh, Batman Rebirth number one, and they'll start with a new number one with a new creative team, and everything from that previous volume is still intact in that continuity and they're just gonna move forward. Just in case where there was any confusion. So it's not a reboot or a soft reboot like the New 52 was, but it's a relaunch more similar to Marvel's uh, Marvel Now and All New Marvel Now and, and now the All New All Different Marvel that they had done. So uh, there's a lot of cool stuff happening with, with Rebirth. Um, I could spend a whole video talking about the stuff I'm excited about. You know, all the new creative teams. Most of the books have new creative teams, aside from a few. Aquaman has Dan Abnett still. Uh, Robert Venditti will be writing a different Green Lantern book. Uh, Harley Quinn has the same creative team, I believe. There's a few of them that have the same creative teams, or at least the same writers. Some of them, writers are moving to different books, like Scott Snyder moving to All-Star Batman. And then a lot of them, most of them are getting new writers and artists. Uh, I'm excited about several of them. For instance, Batman by Tom King is going to be amazing. Um, Flash, I think, has a really good creative team. A lot of the different books have cool stuff. But I wanted to focus less on the specifics of that because I've talked about that on my website already and talk more about um, what DC Rebirth means to me, like what, what I'm thinking about what they're doing here or what the lack of what they're doing here. I, I don't know how I'm going to put that, but, but anyway, my thoughts on this, essentially, um, I don't think that DC really knows what they they want to be right now. Rebirth is kind of a return to form, a, a previous form for them that it seemed like they were trying to kind of move away from. Uh, whenever New 52 started, there was this real, like, focus on editorial. There was like editorial was was basically forcing everyone to get one book out at a specific time. You had 13 books that were all on the first week of the month, 13 on the second, 13 on the third, and 13 others were on the fourth, and you would always see them come out at the same time. And this editorial conflict really caused for a lot of issues with writers. There was a ton of editorial conflict, and it wasn't just about like the timing and stuff, because a lot of books wound up, you'd see them get rushed out, they'd get filler artists and stuff, but also editorial had a lot of mandates about what could and couldn't be done. So there was a ton of focus on editorial kind of hovering over creators shoulders and not letting them have that creative freedom to do what they wanted on the book and you'd see a lot of stuff like you know jh williams uh the third and william h blackman um leaving batwoman because editorial told them they could not let uh kate get married to maggie Stuff like that happened. There's a lot more. Like James Robinson wound up leaving Earth 2 because of editorial conflict. A lot of stuff like that happened. 
And then I think that they, they started to realize there was an issue there and they started to move away from that. And they did something called DCU, Y-O-U. And this happened uh, after the 40th issues of all the books. A ton of new series started. I think over a dozen new titles started. A lot of books were uh, ended. And we saw a lot of things that were really different because before that, like, they had a very distinct house style to DC. And everything was cut in, into specific uh, families of books. There was the Batman family, Superman family, Green Lantern family, Justice League family, The Dark, The Edge, uh, Young Justice, or whatever. And all of those, they, they, were, they were separated very neatly. They had their editors for those groups of, of books and stuff. And, you know, you would see books get canceled and replaced and stuff like that within the family. Um, and when DCU launched, they completely just kind of threw that out the window. And they were like, ah, we're done with that. We're just doing whatever. Whatever works, we're going to do it. And we're letting creators have a little more freedom to do whatever they wanted on the book. So they had a lot of really cool stuff come out around that time. That's when we saw Omega Men, which is an amazing book by Tom King. You see the new Hellblazer series by James Tinian and Ming Doyle with uh, Riley Rossmo doing amazing artwork on that series. You see uh, the new Batgirl series, which I, I never really got into, but a lot of people really loved that one. Uh, you know, Robin, son of Batman, Gotham Academy, uh, Black, uh, Black Canary got her own series, Dr. Fate, Martian Manhunter, a lot of these series, uh, Midnighter had his own series, and it was great, like all these series, and they had very, very distinct and different flavors to them than anything that had come before from the New 52. Um, it was it was very very distinct and it was really cool because it definitely felt like editorial was not hovering so strongly over their writers anymore but rather they were allowing the writers to have more freedom and a lot of these books started to feel a little bit more like creator own titles they started to feel like things that would come out of image except they were using you know properties from DC comics and I think without a doubt that DC was was kind of being uh, inspired by, to, to put it nicely, uh, what, what Marvel had been doing. And uh, if, if you look at what Marvel had been doing around that time, they were succeeding with a lot of books that were kind of the alternative from the regular superhero titles like Hawkeye and Miss Marvel. They, you know, they, they had a completely different flavor to them compared to a lot of the different superhero books on the shelves. Um, but, it, you know, they were still doing the regular superhero books, but they had these other books that kind of had that indie feel to them. Um, they had, you know, Hawkeye was with Matt Fraction, who, you know, he put a lot of comedy behind it, a lot of character behind it. They focused less on these characters in the Marvel Universe, tying in, in crossovers and events and stuff. And, you know, stuff like that and Miss Marvel, they just kind of did their own thing. And those characters existed in the Marvel Universe, but in this very separate little world for themselves. And it was awesome. And a lot of other series started popping up that had similar styles to them, like uh, Spider-Woman wound up developing kind of like that. She-Hulk was a bit like that. Um, Spider-Gwen. A lot of different books have come out, and they're still kind of doing that. They still have a lot of books that maintain that basic uh, thought behind them. And it seemed like DC was kind of going, being like, hey, that's succeeding over there. We should try to do the same sort of thing. And DC did a good job with it because they were getting these new creators, these younger creators, uh, some people that worked on like books from other publishers, and they were letting them go ahead and do their thing on these books. And it was really cool. It was really awesome. And a lot of these books were some of the best ones that were being published. So the DCYOU, DCU period uh, at the publisher was a really great time uh, for a really, you know, a nice amount of really cool books that started up. And it was a good change from the New 52 because the New 52, like I said, suffered from so many, you know, editorial problems that it was nice to get that breath of fresh air. And then they announced DC Rebirth. And I thought, you know, so we'll probably see a lot more of these types of titles. And I was excited to see what was going to be happening and what kind of books they were going to be putting out there. And then we started seeing, like, the types of books that were there and the creative teams. And, and some of them were cool, like the ones that I mentioned. I was like, okay, okay. But there was a lack of, like, all of those other types of series. And if you look at the different books that are coming out, there's pretty much none of those, you know, series that feel different that you know Gotham Academy is coming back Batgirl still feels a little bit alternative compared to the other ones but if you look at it you know 
where did, you know, Martian Manhunter go? Where did Dr. Fate go? Where did these titles go? Where's, you know, Omega Men is ending and not coming back. But it's it's just a focus on like normal superhero type books again, and they're just losing all of that. And I'm not saying it's a problem for them to just focus on the regular superhero books. I love those types of books. There's no problem in that. And if you're sitting there thinking, well, I didn't care about all those titles anyway, so it's no loss for me, that's fine. I'm not saying that you're wrong or anything. What I'm saying is, why did DC change completely within like the period of like maybe a year from wanting to be different and wanting to do these different types of books, which were really succeeding, really uh, drawing, you know, good audience and getting really good uh, feedback and review from both, you know, the consumers and from the critics alike and just completely wipe their slate of those and move backwards to just doing plain old superhero books again. And I have to sit there and think it's because DC really does not know what they want to do or who they want to be. DC is having their own basically identity crisis. Uh, no pun intended, but uh, that's what they're going through right now is kind of, to me, it seems like an identity crisis. They don't know if they want to be classic DC. They don't know if they want to do something to kind of keep up with the current market uh, and what the other publishers are doing. If they move back to being classic DC, then they kind of maintain that same house style. Uh, but they still, you know, there's that fear that they're going to go back to having all those editorial issues. Um, especially because they announced that most of these books are going to be double shipping and stuff. So now people are going to be having to maintain two books a month regularly. And that can be a problem because when you double ship, you have editors breathing over the shoulders of writers and artists even more. And then you get more filler art and, and it's just, it, it can turn into a mess. So it has me really concerned that you know, they're, they're going to be moving into a weird area. And then when they see that that's not going to succeed for them, they might try to move back again into what they were doing with DCU. And it's just going to, you know, it could wind up being this back and forth, back and forth between the two. Another thing that happened was they, they unveiled their new logo recently. And, you know, I was already going to make a video about DC and all the things that are going on over there and about Rebirth. And they slapped this new logo on there. And it just made me sit there and be like, this is more of the identity crisis. They just changed their logo, like what, four years ago, maybe less than, into the, the peel. They went from the swoosh into the peel, and now they're doing another one. It's like a stamp. It's this very minimalistic, just circle with DC, one color. Uh, the, the letters are kind of, you know, made with these angular edges on them that they said is supposed to evoke, you know, the, the S uh, shield from Superman, the bat symbol, the W's for Wonder Woman. And it's supposed to say that, you know, they're, they're thinking about their past, their present, and their future, whatever. But why do you need a new logo, DC? Like, what does that do for you? Is, is a new logo going to solve all of your problems? Is a new logo going to fix your, you know, is it going to fix Dan Didio and everything that he's, his stupid decisions for the publisher? What is a new logo going to do for you, really? Why are you spending so much time and money and effort to create a new logo, assuming they put a lot of money and a lot of time into that, when you should be focusing more on making sure that your books are as good as they can possibly be? And I'm sure they have a lot of confidence in the stuff that's coming out in, you know, Rebirth, but there's there's not really a need to keep doing these little things. I don't know. It's just something that kind of aggravated me. And I have no issue with the logo itself. It's fine. It's not awesome. It's not great. I prefer the swoosh because that's what I grew up with or the the bullet logo, but you know whatever. It's what it is. So, you know, that's that's just what I'm thinking about with DC right now. I I, I don't think they really know what they want to do as a publisher. I don't think they know where they are as a publisher. It, it just seems like they're trying to find their identity in today, in, you know, the, the 2016 world of comics. Um, honestly, they could do whatever they want. If they wanted to stick with the way that they were being at the beginning of the New 52, fine. That would have worked out. But the fact that they're going back and forth and being so wishy-washy, it just, it has me sitting here scratching my head. So that, that's all I really wanted to say. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Check out my links down below for my site and my page and all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys next time.